Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, thanks for dropping by. My talk is about time and position spoofing <laughs> with open source projects. And GPS is widely used for positioning and time synchronization for mobile devices. However, since time and position data of mobile devices are trusted and self seldom verified by most vendors and developers, it uh, provides a huge attack surface for potential attackers. In this talk, I will walk you through the methods of positioning and time spoofing uh, simply with some open source projects. Uh, my name is Wang Kang. I'm a security analyst for a mobile security team of Alibaba Group in China. Uh, Chen Shihua and uh, Pan Naimin are co-authors of the, this talk, but they, uh, they are attending the double 11 festival in China, so they can, cannot uh, come here today. <laughs> Okay, in this talk, I will demonstrate the time uh, and position data of mobile devices can be easily cheated using open source tools and neither physical touch with uh, mobile devices nor jailbreak root process is necessary. It, it's able to interfere all the position and time of cell phones in the surrounding area. Uh, several years ago, it's still very expensive for personal potential attackers to obtain SDR devices. SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. But with SDR platforms becoming much cheaper, um, hardware cost of this method is only about $300 today and could be even cheaper, uh, cheap later. First, I will introduce to, uh, and demo a method of GPS signal spoofing with SDR platform. And then I will show a method of Wi-Fi based positioning spoofing. In our opinion, it's urgent to inform vendors and developers of mobile devices and the GPS and Wi-Fi positioning data are not reliable and should be verified carefully. In the end, uh, some advices on pre preventing such spoofing are provided. Okay, let's look at uh, GPS spoofing. First, let us uh, uh, define the problem of GPS positioning. And there is a satellite at X1, Y1, Z1, and uh, we can measure the time it takes for a signal to reach from the satellite to us, which is uh, tau1. Uh, with the velocity of light c, we have this equation, which says the distance from X, Y, Z to X1, Y1, Z1 is equal to c times tau1. We cannot solve, solve it though, since it has three unknowns. So we can simply add another two satellites whose coordinates are already known too. Let's mark them as x2, y2, z2, and x3, y3, z3. And also, we can measure the durations tau2 and tau3, so we can get an equation set as shown in the lower right of this slide. Now it seems that our position coordinate x, y, z can be solved out of the equations. But it's not enough in engineering practice to measure tau1. We compare the time of receiving and sending of the signal. The time of receiving comes from our local clock, while the time of sending comes from the clock on the satellite. Those two clocks are not necessarily synchronized. There is a time deviation uh, between them, we note it as uh, delta t1. This gives us a new set of equations. <coughs> Again, we cannot solve these equations since we have just uh, introduced three additional unknowns, which is uh, delta t1, delta t2, and delta t3. Now we have a good news and a bad news. The good news is the clock on different GPS satellites are high precision atomic clocks which are strictly synchronized. So all these delta t's are equal. Mm, now we have the following equations. But the bad news is we still cannot solve this equation set. We have four unknowns, right? And uh, there are three equations. So the answer is simple. We just add the fourth satellite. The equation set becomes this. Now, um, 
that our position x, y, z can be solved out of the equation set, and this is why at least four satellites are needed to complete the GPS positioning process. Besides, we can also calculate our local clock offset against the atomic clock in the GPS satellites. And this procedure is known as GPS time synchronization. Okay, let's have a quick glance of at GPS satellite signal frames. <laughs> Basically, GPS is BPSK uh, signal in CA code, broadcasting at 1575.42 uh, megahertz. The bit rate of GPS satellite is 50 uh, BPS. Uh, GPS satellites broadcast GPS signals in different frequency band and uh, in different modulation. L1 signal is the most common civ uh, signal in civil usage. The strength of signal uh, received is very weak at about uh, minus 130 dBm, and most GPS receivers wouldn't work indoor. It makes the GPS signal interference or spoofing quite easy since attackers don't need to generate a signal strong enough to mask the real signal. Okay, B BRDC files, which stands for Broadcast Ephemeris Data, uh, contains the unique GPS satellite ephemeris messages for each day. Ephemeris data provides the exact location data, um, which is X, X, T, Y, T, Z, T, and orbit parameters of each satellite so that uh, receivers can get priori information in, in order to calculate position of the satellites. You can download BRDC archives in form of RENIX format from FTP server of NASA. RENIX stands for a Receiver Independent Exchange Format. It's a, um, a data interchange format for uh, raw satellite navigation system data. And the archives are named in the following scheme by rules in this table. Yeah, um, four, four digit year, two digit year, three digit day of the year, compressed unit file, it's a dot Z. Okay, for example, BRDC uh, 354.0.14N uh, means December 20th, uh, 2014. Yeah. Uh, since uh, December 20th is the uh, 354th day of the year 2014. Okay, for, for a long time, uh, there is only concept of this kind of GPS spoofing, and there is no available running code. But now there is one. Uh, but first, let me show the hardware platform we needed for this experiment. To transmit uh, the signals into real air, we need uh, software-defined radio platforms such as uh, HackRF, BladeRF, or USRP. Uh, HackRF is an open-source SDR platform using US USB 2.0 interface, operates on frequency band from 10 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, supporting a maximum r a sample rate of 20 mega samples per second, but only half duplex. Um, every des design detail is publi publicly available from host driver to ARM firmware and even hardware scheme and PCB layout and boom, um, they are all open source. Um, Blade RF has a, a USB 3.0 interface, operates on frequency band from 300 megahertz to 3.8 gigahertz, supporting independent RXTX and 12-bit quantization, and 40 mega SPS quadrature sampling, and the full duplex, which means it can transmit and receive signal at the same time. Beta RF seems to have a better radio frequency perform performance than Hack RF, since it uses only one um, radio chip to support all the working uh, radio frequency range. Um, but Hack RF used some radio frequency switches and converters on PCB board to expand a narrow working frequency to a larger one, which brings quite a lot of uh, radio power loss. Um, but according to our experiment, both GPS signal transmitted by Hack RF and Blade RF can be decoded by regular GPS receivers. 
um, we use a GPS SDR SIM project, which is an open source GPS baseband signal ge generator released under MIT license. The principle also of this project is a Japanese uh, man, uh, Takuji Ibinuma. Uh, but we have contributed codes of a sta static loca uh, location feature, which is minus L uh, switch. And we also contributed Blade RF script support to this project. And it takes a Renix, remember Renix, formatted GPS infirmaries archive and the location as the input and uh, generates GPS baseband signal for SDR platform to playback. First, we check out the code from GitHub repo. And uh, uh, then compile and install this project. Um, then ge generate baseband samples according uh, to your position using minus L location switch. Uh, finally, you can tr uh, transmit through SDR devices that's all, it's pretty simple. We also um, uh, have contributed a capital R uh, switch for a HackRF project. Um, you can use HackRF transfer program to, to, to send, uh, to TX the samples. It's very handy because the GPS SDR SIM project only generates um, a sample of three minutes maximum while GPS receivers probably don't have enough time to complete the first GPS capture process in just three minutes. Okay, um, let us see some experiment results. On the left side, it's a common serial port GPS receiver with a Linux project called GPSD. On the right side, uh, yeah, this is right, yeah. It's an app called uh, GPS Test on Android smartphone. As we can see, both receivers can decode the generated fake GPS signals correctly. <coughs> okay, for iPhone, when a GPS spoof starts, the positioning data of iPhone can be cheated also, even with Wi-Fi and cellular services switched on. Um, so Apple devices seem to trust GPS data at quite a, a high level. In my ex experiment, when GPS spoofing is stopped, but without receiving a real GPS signal, uh, date and time won't be fixed immediately according to NTP service from Wi-Fi or cellular network, which is, which is uh, um, quite uh, un easy to understand. When we get to the open air to get a strong and stable rail GPS signal, the affection won't be fixed for at least 10 minutes, which is pretty annoying. Even we, uh, even we try to switch the automated timing to off and set the right time back. Um, but when uh, automated timing is switched to on, it would go back to the fixed time again. And this is Mm, I think it's because GPS time cache has a long life in iPhone. Okay, so we tested the Apple Watch. Mm, the photo on the left, we can see that um, the date and the time of Apple Watch uh, was cheated by GPS signal too. Um, in this case, it's changed to December 20th, 2014. While the real local time is June 20th, 2015. And since Apple um, uh, Watch is fully synchronized with iPhone, and this is uh, pretty straightforward, I think. Mm, the picture on the right uh, shows the photos uh, or screenshots taken with iPhone. At this time, will be inserted into a fake uh, into a fake timestamp into the photo stream. For example, in my experiment where I take a screenshot, um, it just can't find it at the bottom of my photo stream. This confused me for a while. Okay, nowadays more and more mobile uh, apps use positioning data to bring more suitable uh, service to users. But it seems that those apps trust uh, um, position data totally. For example, taxi calling apps like Uber 
um, and Didi Taxi. Didi Taxi is a, a popular um, alternative app in China. Yeah, uh, it can be easily cheated um, using this GPS working method. Can this is um, uh, Japan, France, and uh, this is uh, Didi Taxi. Um, the left picture shows that uh, um, location-based apps like WeChat, which is a popular uh, message app in China also, will get a cheated location label when posting with uh, ge geographic labels. And la apps like uh, uh, Nike Plus Running can be also cheated too. Okay, that was GPS spoofing. Um, then I will introduce a cheaper method to do position spoofing with, which only needs a laptop. It's a Wi-Fi assisted location spoofing. Since um, GPS positioning won't work indoors, positioning service providers such as Apple Maps, Google Maps, often use Wi-Fi signal to help users to get a better positioning performance. The prin uh, principle is simple. The wireless chipset of cell phones collect information of all surrounding Wi-Fi hotspots. Mm, the key information to help positioning is SSID and BSSID. SSID means service set identification. Mm, it's a display name of Wi-Fi hotspot. Mm, BSSID, which stands for Basic Service Set Identification, is a MAC address of the wireless access point, AP. A positioning service provider uh, collects SSID and BSSID against the GPS data into their positioning assist database. Sometimes the information collect process is completed use in user's cell phone. Uh, for example, I got a clip from Apple's website, uh, uh, which I quote, these calculations are performed live on the iPhone using a crowd-sourced database of Wi-Fi hotspot and cell tower data that is generated by tens of millions of iPhones sending the geotagged location of nearby Wi-Fi hotspots and cell towers in an anonymous and encrypted form to Apple. So what about we generate some fake SSIDs and BSSIDs in order to see whether those positioning service can be cheated or not. The most straightforward idea is to collect those data manually and then buy a lot of wireless routers setting the BSSIDs and the SSIDs of each router according to our needs. It will be quite a hard job to complete. So we, we need to come up with a more effective approach. First, we need to collect SSID and BSSID around. Uh, for Linux, we have IWUtil, which can easily collect those IDs. In order to speed up, we wrote a org script called wifi-mdk3.org to process IW output for later use. We will see the output later. If you are a user of Mac OS X, you can use Airport Util shipped within your system. We also have a simple but effective bash script to help you collect those data more effectively. In my case, I took a taxi to collect about 20 positions in my city. All I need to do is pressing up and enter, up and enter in taxi. Okay, to complete this attack, we only need a Linux laptop with a wireless card. First, we need to uh, install MTK3, which aims to e exploit common IEEE 802.11 protocol weaknesses. Then, change the following line in make file uh, in order to make MTK3 compile successfully in recent operating system. And then in order to generate fake SSID beacons, we need to set up the wireless card to monitor mode. There are two ways to do this. One is using air crack ng package, which, uh, and another is just using iwconfig. Okay, then um, the show is on. We can start the beacon flood attack using B and minus V uh, switch. Um, then let's see some uh, results. We get to the position shown in the top left pin of the map to collect data. Um, then we get to the bottom right pin map uh, to reply the SSIDs. 
OK? It's, uh, uh, this picture shows the faked position. Um, we, we capture the SSID here. And this girl, I think, is my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> OK, the list is BSSID and SSID data. We collect it. So take a picture, please, and type them with your keyboard afterwards. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, they will publish the material at night. You can try to do this exp experiment later by yourself, I think. Um, soon after we start the flood, a lot of faked SSIDs can be scanned using our cell phone. But those SSIDs, as we can see, cannot be attached uh, successfully, which is uh, um, as we expected. Um, uh, then we opened Baidu map. Uh, it's a, a popular map uh, in China back since we, 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 we can't use, use Google, you know. Uh, after a while, the position is affected success, successfully. Uh, I, I do this experiment uh, in Alibaba group site, uh, which is a uh, uh, right, uh, right, right bottom uh, point. Mm. <coughs> OK, that's uh, all for Wi-Fi assisted positioning spoofing. There are also, another, uh, also other possibilities when time is affected, such as SSL certificate. Uh, for example, we know that the expiry date of uh, SSL certificate is very important. Attackers can use this to attempt man in the middle attack. A base station frequency offset. We also found out that this GPS spoofing method can also interfere the sync signal of cellular network base stations. Most base stations in cellular networks rely on PPS, which means pulse per second signal, which derived uh, from GPS signal to calibrate frequency offset. We transmitted fake GPS signal, which contains a high error uh, PPS signal. Then the LTE base station automatically sync with this PPS signal, and the whole LTE network's frequency error increased for about 5 hertz to um, 11,000 hertz, which can cause the base station failing to work. <clears throat> and NTP services um, provide time synchronization services through internet connection. Um, most of NTP services use GPS time as their uh, upstream source. If NTP service is affected by affectors, um, I think the impact uh, would be enormous. <clears throat> so we will give some suggestions on positioning security for developers. One, you can add a position and the daytime check based on a continuous principle. Um, position and time hooping should be verified or warned to users in mobile devices. Mm, uh, two, a, add a separate clocking hardware module, for example, in Apple Watch. <clears throat> Three, decrease the cache time from GPS positioning signal. According to our observation, the cache time of GPS position data should be decreased since it's not appropriate for a fake uh, GPS position to be cached for a long period. And four, uh, add a manually refresh GPS cache function. I think it is necessary to provide a forced refresh function for positioning data when users find out that position data is suspicious. And five, add a high priority time sync device based on NTP or SSL, for example. And since the internet connection is more reliable for mobile devices, an authoritative NTP over SSL time source should be lifted to a higher priority in mobile system. And six, GPS signal strings detect. Fake GPS signals are often much stronger and uh, much more uniform than real signal, as is shown in this picture. Abnormal signal strings uh, um, could be used uh, as a detect identification, I think. Uh, the last one, um, Wi-Fi positioning data provider should do cross verification for their database in order to exclude fake samples. You know, you should never trust a user's input. Okay, in conclude, we have introduced two methods of position spoofing. It's important for developers and vendors to examine position time data more closely and more frequently and more effectively. 
I, as a basic security principle, any user input shouldn't be trusted completely. Besides, we have also submitted the relevant technical details to Apple product security team. Um, we, do, uh, we would also like to thank Dr. Yang Bo of CITR China Academy of uh, Telecommunication Research for his work on uh, uh, frequency offset interf interference of base station. We'd also like to thank Tuna Association of uh, Tsinghua University for the help on some experiments. Okay, that's all. Uh, any questions? Okay. Out of the three cards that you have, which one worked the best for your laptop? Mm, uh, switch card? Yeah, the, the, the SDR. So the, uh, okay, okay. Uh, maybe it's this, this one. Uh, I think Blade Arf works uh, uh, works better. I think because the uh, uh, RF performance is better than Hack RF, but Hack RF has a um, lower price and uh, open source blood. I think, <laughs> and the USRP of this uh, uh, the type is B uh, two hundred and ten. I think it's very expensive than other two. Okay. Uh, you, 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 please. What I think you. What is the radius uh, this kind of cards can spoof? Uh, it's a, it's a what range? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, the area you can spoof. Error. I think uh, the whole. Uh, mm, one kilometer, 10 kilometers? No, 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 not that fast because we, we haven't tried in a, uh, uh, in a high uh, antenna. I think uh, if you use a, uh, a high antenna and uh, strong uh, strength, I think that, that is enough to cover a um, like 10 or kilometers, I think. Because GPS signal is uh, pretty low at about one uh, minus 130 dBm it uh, is below the uh, noise uh, no, noise level I think so so it uh, is very easy to be interfered okay hi okay I think later you, you can, um, after you get this material, you can do the Wi-Fi positioning spoof experiment just in your Linux laptop. It's very simple. And uh, you, 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 can, uh, you can try to collect uh, these uh, points, um, I think, in Netherlands. When you get back to the US or to other country, you can just uh, fake the, 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 the position. OK? Glonus, oh Glonus, oh, um, actually the, uh, 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 the BRDC data um, supports Glonus uh, because uh, um, this one, N, N stands for GPS and another uh, character stands for Glonus satellite. Uh, it, it, I think it's, uh, it's uh, very simple to do this. Okay, there's another two minutes. Maybe uh, any other questions? No quick life demo. Quick life demo. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> today. But I think uh, it's, it's very simple. You can you can do it by yourself. I think. This I think is very easy to to uh, to do. Oh, hi. So what would be the approximate cost of setting this up? Cost, you say? Yeah. Um, for Wi-Fi, it cost nothing. It's, it's zero dollar. Uh, no, no, no. Wi-Fi wi is moving, doesn't need SDR devices. SDR, uh, for HackRF, I think it's about uh, um, three hundred dollars. Uh, you can buy it from uh, Great uh, Scott Gadget, and uh, Blade RF. I think it's about uh, um, four hundred dollars, maybe. And for Blade RF, uh, for USRP, it's a great. Uh, uh, it's more than that. I, I can't remember actually. Okay. 
15 gigahertz. No, no, no. GPS signal is um, 1050 um, and 75.9 uh, uh, megahertz. Um, it's 1.5 gigahertz, not 15 gigahertz. OK. Actually, and the, the frequency transform, uh, transformation is a traditional um, communication method. Um, uh, 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 about 15 gigahertz or 50 gigahertz, it can be hand, handled using a tra a transformation uh, such as, multi, uh, such as uh, uh, some, some re radio components. It's very simple. So the gigahertz number, um, uh, you, you can just uh, uh, see it's a very large number. Okay. Okay, I think time is up. Oh, one last question, maybe. Maybe I missed that in the beginning, if so, I'm sorry. But um, did you also, in your research, take, take a look at the military grade GPS and how hard that would be? Actually, G, uh, GPS uh, um, documentation is very de uh, in detail, I think. Yes. You, you, no, no, no. Uh, that is PY code, I think you said. Uh, it's PY code. PY code. Yeah? No, I was just wondering, while listening to your talk, that, you know, how hard it would be for somebody to attack this if it's still secure enough and the mm. uh, Yeah, it is still secure enough. Actually, someone has already done this, I think. Everyone is doing this, I think. <laughs> it's not that. But, but uh, they use some. Uh, some method to change the, change the cipher frequently, I yeah, think. So the technique will still work, but you need to know, because if, if, if the original GPS signal was the, the, the highest uh, precision, I see. but uh, they actually uh, introduced the error, so the civilian was not precise. So if you know the, know the code to get back to the original one, then the, the technique still holds. Okay. So to, to jam that, or no, no not to jam that, Okay. Linux example, okay. Yeah, this one. Okay, thanks. <laughs>